Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV with myself and Bars. Um, a little roundup of what's happened in the week, and then a big match preview. Uh, Oxford at home Saturday, which is as big as can be. Yeah. Um, Start of a few big games. Yeah, especially this week. I mean, we'll get to it in a little while, but if we can take four points from Oxford and Bristol Rovers yeah. any which way, then I think Luton almost becomes a bit of a free swing next Saturday, because let's be honest, there's our, has any team gone there and won this season? Well, and we are going, we must be mad, but it'll be a good day out, sure. Um, but uh, before we get on to the match preview, a um, little bit in the week, obviously everyone, unless you've been living in a cave, is aware that Max Amar became a dad for the second time this uh, past seven days. Fair play to him, I've not seen you since that game and no. I thought his attitude was absolutely spot on because I think nine times out of ten you'd stay behind. But maybe it was the fact that we were short maybe defensively. Yeah, it might have been different if Gabs had been fit. Yeah, and Lacey then I think he'd have probably sacked it off. But um, superb attitude. Um, just felt sorry for him. If we could have seen it out for another couple of minutes it would have been the perfect weekend. Yeah. Daddy for a second time, captain the side to a clean sheet and three points on the road. But... As I said on Monday, he's got bigger things to celebrate rather than a draw. So, as I said, Monday, Max, I hope uh, mum and daughter, is it daughter this time? I think so, are doing really well. Um, and yeah, Steve Lovell has been talking about him in the press this week. That is Steve Lovell's quote from this week's Medway Messenger talking to Luke Cordell and he said it's significant getting to 200 games and he's still got another season and a half left with us so he could take that up to 250 quite easily and hopefully beyond. I'd imagine if his form continues in the way it's been for the majority of this contract then he'll probably get offered another one because he'll be 28 and a half, 29 by the time probably that comes around. Big contract. I'd imagine but in terms of centre-backs you say he's probably then approaching his, his peak years but your thoughts on Max Aymer? I think bar a few iffy months under Pennock. When he was was that when he captain. took the captaincy, yeah. yeah, and he didn't really appreciate um, it, I don't Bar think. those few months where maybe the pressure became too much for him, he's been solid since he's joined. That's well, it. We you know, we said for a long time, he's always better when he's got a regular partner. He's better when he had Egan with him. He's been really good with Gabs. But I think he is now, with, with experience, he is adapting his game better to different partners. And it's only a you know, drop in the ocean, so to speak. But he's played, what now, four games with Conor Ogilvy? And there's, I don't think there's been any noticeable drop in Max's performance. No. And if anything, we've looked stronger defensively over the last month since that Kwani got injured, which is weird. And it's, it's not something that we'd have envisaged when um, he went down injured at Barnsley. Um, yeah, like you said, I mean, we signed him on loan, didn't we? And he, he played half a season under Edinburgh. Played games all, all summer, didn't he, about whether he was signing or not? Wasn't that one of the, was that Power Hour? Was that the Power Hour yeah, summer where we signed him, Garmston and Morris signed a new deal, I think, yeah. Glenn Morris. Um, but yeah, he came in under, was it Peter Taylor signed him originally? Peter Taylor definitely brought him in on loan. And he played majority of the games after joining, especially when Justin Edinburgh came in. And we finished 12th after looking like we was getting relegated. I think I said Monday. The only time where he struggled to get in the side, really, was the Egan... Oscillage oh, partnership yeah. first half of the 2015 that 16 first half season. Was outrageous, that and we were, half, yeah, and we were top of the league for half of that season, so it was understandable that the players that had the shirt were going to keep the shirt. But I think he still played 30 plus games, um, and since then, I think he's averaging 45 50 games a season. You don't do that unless you're an half decent player. And how many times have we said about any player at this level, they're not going to chuck in eights and nines every week, they're going to no. chuck in your five or the six because they're league one footballers. And if he was doing eights and nines every week, he would be playing for us. But yeah, I think he's been a really good signing, considering he was a free transfer. Yeah, a classic Peter Taylor one, where he was a good player, and he brought in a few good players, but he just couldn't get him working together. Similarly to Pennock, you could say the same about Pennock, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah, got the good players in, but just couldn't fathom out the best system to get them all in together, unfortunately. But yeah, so Max Amar, 200 appearances on Saturday, if he features, I'd imagine he would. Um, super over the moon for him. I mean, I mean, I spoke to him a couple of years ago for the channel and he's a really nice bloke as well, which I think helps. He just comes across as likeable. Um, but bottom line, he's a top professional and he's, he's a good footballer. He's become more club. vocal as well, I think, this season. Maybe that's come from being alongside Gabs. And experience again, yeah. He was, I mean, what was he when he joined? That's nearly five years ago now, so he'd only been 22. He's now 27 and he's approaching, you know, peak, peak career time. So I think he'll only get better and better. So, yes. Max Amar, brilliant defender. 
Um, next man we're going to talk about is um, someone who we thought probably wouldn't play when he arrived yeah. at the beginning of the season, so that gives it away straight away. But there's talk today of um, Mr. Fuller wanting to end his, se uh, end his season, end his career with us. I've got no qualms about yeah, that at all. Right He's on. been absolutely immaculate since he came back. Like we've just said, we thought he was going to be back up to Luke O'Neill and then the other side would be Conor Ogilvy and Bradley Garmston fighting it out. Bradley Garmston's disappeared off the face of the planet. We don't know whether anything's happened, but that's by the by. Barry Fuller has basically become first choice right back and left back all in the same yeah. season. It doesn't matter which side he plays, he's been absolutely first class. And the thing for me, still bombing up and down like he's 24. Well, just, just saying, he hasn't adapted his game, he hasn't had to change too. No, he's still charging up, set the goal up yeah. last week for Tom Eves, plays a little, was it a little one-two I think with Eves? Yeah. No, sorry, with, um, on the overlook, Eves gave it to Burke, didn't he? And then Burke. you see Fuller arriving late, brilliant cross, stands it up, sort of middle of the six-yard box and Tom Eves does the rest. But this is the quote anyway, coming from our ageless fullback. Again, talking to Luke Cordell in this week's Medway Messenger, he says, I'd like to finish my career here. It's something I'll probably sit down with the gaffer and the chairman and talk about towards the end of the season. Spot on. We've got jobs to do first, haven't we? And he does go on to say, um, obviously our priority in the minute is to secure League One football. And then after that, sit down and sort something out and we can sign a new deal that could potentially finish my career. He turns 35 in September. I don't think there's any sign of him slowing down just yet. So no. I would definitely give him another 12 months. Yeah, I'd, I'd say give him a year and then say... So just keep doing it that way now, yeah. Triggers another year. Yeah, because there's no point giving him two years because, I mean, touch wood, it don't happen, but you only need to give him a two-year deal and then he breaks down injured and suddenly we're stuck with a contract yeah. that, and, and no player, effectively, but I don't think there's any... He's been that um, the most pleasant of surprises, isn't he? He's a massive contender for player of the season for me. I tweeted, uh, is it D3, D4 the other day? Mm -hmm. Asked about player of the season. I said, he's is the obvious one. Fuller's very, very close to him. Yep. Young might have been interested in this season, but we'll do that another day. Um, talking to youngsters, though, there are um, three that are on loan at one club at the moment, lower down the football pyramid, that is Sittingbourne, and their manager, Chris Lynch, has been talking very highly about Roman Campbell, Henry Woods and Jack Morrell this week. And this is what he has to say about the young trio. And that is the quote from Chris Lynch, who says, Jack is probably about a year and a half away, but he's got some amazing technical ability. He's come on massively since he's been here and looks a very good player. Roman, for me, he's not far off it now. I think he will be pushing for the bench going into next season, and Henry isn't far behind. We've seen... We've seen Woods in pre-season a few times. I can't say anything about Jack Morrell. No, be I'll, I'll be honest, he's not... I might have seen him play, but I'm it's not one that I recall thinking, oh, he stands out. Henry Woods was the one that hit the hat-trick at Sheppey yep. pre-season. Very good hat-trick. Again, we have to bear in mind it's levels, and that's the level he's playing at at the moment, and he stood out at that level, and he's a kid, so that's great to see. Um, he was one of that scored the outrageous free kick in that game, didn't he? And yeah. I think it was Charlie Noyel hit one as well. And yep. didn't Woods crack one in from about 25 scored, yards in open play as well? a very good goal on a tap-in, I think. Well, he slipped it under the keeper yeah. when he was played in. Yeah, really good finishes, all three of them. We've seen him. Did we he play in the? We see Campbell in the youth game recently, didn't we? Saw Campbell in that game definitely. He scored a really good goal yeah. again. At, uh, left footed far corner. Form, yeah, yeah, he was really good, and it seems that he's doing well down at City. But I think he's got five goals already down there. So seems they was in a bit of a trough when they all arrived, and they've they've picked up since then, which is good. Um, can only be good for the football club. I mean, we're not sitting here and saying it's going to be immediate. Chris Lynch knows more about it than I do, and you do, but. Um, is Campbell now the next one in the on the conveyor belt now that Mr. Bowe's left? I was going to say he's probably going to be the Nolan on Bowe next season. But I he's think. still seventeen, so it's I. You have to wrap him up, then. You know, we know how long it took with the likes of Elliot List and the likes of Darren Oldacre. So it is it is positive and it's good to see. But I'm not sure it'll be instant. But it'll be something that we can eagerly keep an eye on, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's basically the weekly roundup. There's not loads. Um, as we've already said, massive game coming up Saturday and this lot come to town. Gilligan v Oxford at the weekend. They sit just inside the relegation. No, just outside. Just, out. just outside. But I think there's about two points that separates 20th and 12th Wickham. Yeah. So... We only have to look at last Saturday. If we'd held on, we'd have been 13th at full time instead of yeah, we were 18th. Yeah, uh, we moved up and down to five or six places, didn't we, on Saturday? Yeah, it was a bit like a heart monitor for a 
poorly patient at hospital, I suppose. It was up and down. Well, he didn't flatline though, I suppose. <laughs> um, but in terms of form, I said it last week. I think I said it the week before. It's always the same for Jules. I think we could go unbeaten for a month and it'd still be exactly the same. We have won two, a drawn two, and lost two of our last six games. So we have eight points from 18. Oxford, guess what? They've won two, drawn two, and lost two of their last six. So they have eight points from 18. At home... We're still not quite there, but we're not a million miles away, are we? We've won two, drawn one, and lost three, so it's seven from 18. Pools have been a bit better, though, aren't they? They're getting there, aren't they? Yeah, and we keep saying the new side. signings have made an ish, have made a difference. Yeah, Barnsley was the horror show and Warsaw a little bit before that, but Scunthorpe was very good, so we have to build on that. In terms of Oxford on the road, they have won one, drawn three, and lost two of their last six. So they have six from 18, but that win was their last away game, which was oh. at... Why can't I think where it was? It was last weekend. Was it Blackpool? I think they beat Blackpool 1-0. Was it? Yeah. I'm going to roll with it. Blackpool, I'm going to say that. James at D3-D4 Football will correct me, I'm sure, if I've got it wrong. But I think it was Blackpool. But whoever it was, that is their only away win in the league this yeah. season. One in 16. So, I guess it depends which I'm way you want to look at it. Away, to be honest. That's the way you look at it, yeah. That's the <laughs> only one. And now they're going to go on another 15-game away winless run. Or... <laughs> they're going to secure back-to-back -back wins and we'll be all moody on Monday. Um, so they're not great away from home. Uh, I think James's word were, when I spoke to him on Twitter today, there was a couple of expletives in there, which I'll not repeat. Um, basically, they're not very good away from home, but we still have to do our job correctly and not worry about them. We've taken four points from the last nine available at home, so that's win, a draw and a defeat. The defeat was the... Someone's just scored in the Arsenal game on the telly. 3-1 to Wren. There goes the bet. Whee! No, it wouldn't last. We won on Tuesday. We weren't going to win tonight. Um, we're, sorry, we have got distracted. Four from the last nine. Yeah, so Barnsley was the horror show. And after that, it's... Who was before that? The win was Scunthorpe. Was the draw at Crinton on the Tuesday night? Oh, I missed Accrington. Yeah, it could be. Wish I had. It weren't. Oh, no, that was all right. So I thought it was Walsall. Accrington weren't bad for a zip-zip, to be fair. Um, team news. Oh, no, we'll do them first. Curtis Nelson, but for me, his career stalled, I think, at Oxford. I yeah, he seemed to be on an upward trajectory, didn't he? I thought Plymouth, he was, absolutely, he was probably one of the best defenders in League 1 and League 2 put together. I think the two names I used to bandy about were him and Ryan Tafazzoli, when Tafazzoli was at Mansfield and yeah, then went to Peterborough. Peterborough. Whereas tafazzoli has gone like that, I think, unfortunately, Curtis Nelson, I know he's had injuries, but he seems to have just stopped a little bit at the moment, but still a fine centre-half at this level on his day. Um, John Moussinho, who we know, Bags of experience. I know there's been a big thing James has been saying on his podcast a couple of times. It depends where Carl Robinson plays him because I think they played him out of position for one game and they got beat by Atkinson and then put him back the week after where he should have been and they won and kept a clean sheet, I think. Uh, Jamie Mackey, loads of experience in the Championship. He's one of them. We'll never score you loads of goals, but, no, but he'll be a pest and he'll be a nuisance yeah. and he'll work hard. Same as how Tom Elliott used to be every season. Yes, not 20 goals a season, probably 10 at a push, but yeah, it'll create loads. And then the young lad who's on loan from, and I've forgotten, is he on loan from Stoke? Is it Jerome Sinclair? Oh, he's on loan from Watford. Watford, sorry. Um, Had a bit of a spell at Sunderland. At Sunderland, beginning of the season. season. I did notice that. Yeah, I think he scored one goal for them. But he was he was goalless in five until last week. And he scored, I think, both were headers last week. Good delivery into the box. And he took both his goals well. So he's going to come into the game full of confidence. You do think James Henry in that list. James Henry's another one with loads of experience. And he scores a lot of goals. So... They've got a few that, that that come with experience, pedigree, that type of thing. Um, but again, it comes back to us and we've got to do everything we need to do properly. Team news again is no Zach Kwani, no Alex Lacey, no Billy Bingham and no Ricky Holmes. It was announced yesterday, I think, that Saturday is going to come slightly too soon, which all the Oxford fans seem really disappointed about because um, they all know about his ability in the first half of this campaign where he was on loan. Um, but Billy Bingham on a slightly positive note is not as bad as they thought yeah I see Lovell said today isn't it? he's not too far away so hopefully if we might see him back for Luton maybe or the week after it's just Billy Bingham unfortunately so we'll see what happens team I wouldn't change it no there's no need to change it at the moment we've been decent Parrot's come in fitted in quite well he's been decent as well and it's another one who we need to get a run of games into because he's a very good footballer at this level if he's fit but hasn't been fit enough um, but yes it's that time. You know what's coming. I shall fold mine up and Boz will give you his match prediction. I think I said it the last couple of weeks. We're going to go 1-0 Jules again. 
We've got one goal margin. I have said 2-1 to Gillingham. Boz's goal scorer will be Mark Byrne. Oh, that would be from outside the box. Mine is Tom Eaves. And I'm going to back Graham Burke to get off the mark this weekend. I don't care who scores, in all honesty, right. as long as we win. I think if we can take, like we mentioned right at the start, four points from these two games. Four points, a decent return. And then is it, we, uh, we have Luton and then Wimbledon, don't we? Luton away, then Wimbledon away. And then I think we no, finish up with Rochdale it. at home before the end of the month. So if you could win two of them three home games and stick a draw on the other one, that's seven. So in worst case scenario, you lose the two away games. You're Luton's taking seven from 15. Sweet, Wimbledon... You'd like to think we can not lose at Wimbledon. Yeah, you'd think I'd take a point. They're scrapping for their lives, yeah. so... That's the thing, Luton look, look are up there, but the rest of the teams we've got this month are in and around us. Good evening. So it's important to, uh, <laughs> it's important to hopefully not lose them That's games. it, yeah. If we can take seven points from the home games... We don't want them gaining any points on us, really. Then the worst case scenario is we lose both away games. We've still taken seven from 15, which is around 50%, which would be four, seven points. What, we need three from the last six games? I think we've managed that somehow along the line, surely. Um, anyway, that's enough from us rabbiting on. Uh, we shall be there Saturday for Match Day Live. There might be a special guest who runs a very um, decent football podcast on Twitter, but it's not confirmed yet, so I'm not going to tell you who. If we can get him on it, it'd be great. Uh, I'm going to speak to James at D3, D4 and see if he's attending. And also, if not, I'll get him to do maybe a little WhatsApp link, giving his thoughts on what's going to happen. Um, I've said it time again and time again. If you're not following James's site on Twitter, it is D3D4Football. Why are you not doing it? For me, it's the best lower league football site around. It's absolutely first class content. Twitter, Instagram. And they cover pop- every club as well. Yeah, in depth. They know their stuff on there. They get, they've get. got correspondence for most of the League 1 and League I 2. I've interviewed the crew manager today, I think. David yep, so that is Friday's drive to and from work sorted out, which is good. Um, they've done a couple of good ones as well, haven't they? Nathan Jones Recently, was good. Nathan Jones um, was good. Danny Cowley, Cowley was really was good. good. Yep. Um, Yes. Anyway, see you Saturday. We'll be there Tuesday as well, and we will be at Kenilworth Road next Saturday. So it's three match day lives in a week. Um, looking forward to them. It seems like ages since I've seen them play live because of these three away games on the bounce. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for retweeting and all of that stuff. And until next time, up the jewels.